<laughs> All right, well, welcome everyone to the Finance Committee meeting. I'll call this meeting to order. We're going to today go over two things. Uh, we're looking at, you know, maybe trying to get a better understanding of the school budget. Uh, thank you, Dr. McKenzie, for coming in and helping out. And also the, um, the building, uh, Municipal Building Committee. Thanks, Tim, for coming in. And I wish there was more of the members here, but... Hey, well, <laughs> we want to get your um, opinion on some things, too. So uh, we'll start with the uh, school budget. Um, I thought what we could do is, um, I know many times we talk about uh, the school choice in, the school mm -hmm. choice out. We've, we've gone over that a little bit, and I'm sure we'll go over it again down mm -hmm. the road. But some of the things we don't go over are things, I, and I tried to look at the budget, go through a lot of it myself. It's online, it's um, so I went through it a little bit. Um, I mean, and I think where this started to come up with was the last town meeting. One of the questions was, is we put money into the, um, for the- uh, Refrigerator, yes, that's what it was. Cooling. And we didn't really understand that. Sure. And, and, um, Questions came up and I, we didn't know the answers to. So if we could better understand that, and I thought maybe sure. there's other things out there such as sports or music or sure maybe thing. that we could go over, and you know anything that you can give sure. us insight on. Sure. So it's, it makes sense to me that people would have questions about why we would need town support to purchase capital items, particularly for the lunch program, because it would. It would make sense if people assumed that the lunch program operate, operated like an enterprise fund. So there are, there are different kinds of funds in a municipal budget and a school department budget. One is the governmental fund, and in that case, it's a fund where we essentially are raising revenues through things like municipal revenues and taxes. Just a traditional governmental fund, there isn't an expectation that the entity is raising revenues or selling anything. We don't have a lot of accounts receivable. Um, that there's an expectation that people have to actually invest in those services. There are proprietary funds and there are enterprise funds. And an enterprise fund would be on the town side like your water fund, right? So you, you sell something and the revenue that you make then sustains the enterprise. And so it's normal for people to think, well, isn't that how the lunch system should work? Mm -hmm. You sell lunches, children buy lunches. Shouldn't it be self-sustaining or perhaps even generating revenue? And the short answer is, it doesn't. So right now, if families are not eligible for a reduced lunch or a free lunch, and those income eligibility levels are set by the state, and um, a logical question would be, what are those? And I would tell you, we don't, the state of Massachusetts doesn't publish those. People give their income, and then the food services director evaluates the income eligibility based on state guidelines and lets people know if they're eligible or not eligible, but they don't publish those income eligibility guidelines. A full, right now, I think if you're, if you just pay the full amount for lunch, it's about $3.75 for a lunch. And um, it is the lunch program, honestly, like most lunch programs that are school operated, so they're not operated by a third party contractor or a private firm, but they're school operated lunch programs. The vast majority of those, particularly the smaller the district, the more likely it is that they are going to run in the red because you don't have as many students over whom to to distribute costs, right? So in a much larger district like Springfield, the cost of a food services director, the cost of your employees, the cost of your food, your goods, your equipment is distributed over a much larger student body. Springfield, you're talking about 25,000 students. In Hadley, you're distributing that cost over just over 500 students, and not all of those students buy lunch. Of those students who buy lunch, you have over one quarter that are eligible either for free or reduced lunch. So one in four students may not be paying at all or they're paying a reduced rate. We do get payments from the federal government to reimburse us from some of the costs associated with providing lunch to low income families. Um, but at the end of the day, we always end up transferring money out of the general fund, out of the operating budget 
we end up transferring money out of that either via school choice into to cover expenses with the, the lunch program and that's just to cover basic day-to-day -day operations so that's personnel food basic operations so that's why there isn't money they're not generating enough of a profit to set aside money that they, we would then be able to use those funds to purchase capital equipment that's why we went we added that to our capital plan that we presented to the town is the three dollars and seventy five cents a standard? Is that who sets that rate? The school committee sets it, but there's the government tells us the federal government uh, makes determinations about the minimum that you can have the lunch be. So they they won't let you go lower than a minimum amount. And the school committee has tech has typically whenever the the federal government has come out with a new floor for the lunch program, they don't go that far above it mm -hmm. okay. you I have a question okay. you said about is it actually 375 that you're you know charging? I want to say Kathy it is 375 okay. but I could be wrong on that I just bought lunch the other day it was turkey gravy day I say it's four the best dollars day you month. got change you did yeah right? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 375 I got um one. and then the staff how much are you charging staff and is there a high percentage of the staff um, we pay the same amount. Oh, I, so that's what I'm saying. What did I just pay for? Yeah, my okay. Turkey so, so <laughs> or grilled cheese tomato, as Mr. Stanley knows, when he tried to have a meeting with me. And I was no, it was Turkey Gravy Day. Oh, it was Turkey yeah. Gravy Day. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> everything comes to a halt. <laughs> okay. So we pay the same amount. So um, you do get for free, you get the three, $3.35 back for each free student and two ninety five dollars for a reduced student. And so that should sort of cancel the cost out because you're what you're making the lunch for you're getting back mm -hmm. from state and fed um, I'm just curious if it is this hard and we're in the red so deeply mm -hmm. all of the time has there ever been a consideration for a satellite kitchen between the two very close schools to sort of cert you know maybe not even to lose staff but certainly equipment and all of the funds that go within that within the room sure so t tell me a little bit more about what you're thinking so you're thinking. one kitchen would make lunch for all mm -hmm. schools and satellite it they do that in westfield they do it in other towns locally i'm sure mm -hmm. you probably mm -hmm. could find mm -hmm. out better than i how many i recently have had some experience with the lunch program mm -hmm. and it was one it was a thought mm -hmm. um, of a school very close that could utilize a satellite kitchen mm -hmm. somewhere else and then you would be the satellite kitchen then gains all of the funds from whatever school you become the satellite kitchen for. Mm -hmm. And so then of course it increases because the FNRs are there mm -hmm. and that money is coming directly into the program. Mm -hmm. um, and just one little quick one, I don't know how many staff do, but you know, just to raise that to $4 could be helpful as well. Mm -hmm. um, because there really shouldn't be a discount to teachers and probably the lunch may mm -hmm. cost in fact a little more than three seventy-five on some days to make depending on waste but there are some ways to maybe help or go about it you know financially just so that you're not in the red it's hard to be in the red and gain money from the state and feds they'll start saying what are you doing mm -hmm. you know because mm -hmm. they're in charge of the business also right. they're helping out right. you know it's not okay to just say you know not that you are but mm -hmm. anyone mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I would just try to help make that yeah. easier you know with the funding and all and of course all of the money's coming out of that money, and as you stated, but it's also the salaries for all of the people does mm -hmm. come out of that. So it's not just food here in and food out, it's all the salaries. Yeah, personnel, I said that. Personnel. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I'm saying, yeah. you know, just yeah. to make sure. And the electricity and all of that comes mm -hmm. out of it as well. And the P&Ls are done quarterly, so you do mm -hmm. get to know if you're heading downhill quickly. Yeah. Well, we also update, so we update the revolving account every single month. It goes as part of the school committee packet. The school committee looks at the balances and every single revolving account and lunch is a revolving account. So they yeah. analyze those every single month. Right. Um, and the satellite kitchen, what we had looked at, and we had talked with Gateway at one point and we talked with another district about sharing our food services director. Mm -hmm. But um, in both cases, the districts that had originally approached us then decided that they wanted to have their own food services director. So we have on, on more than one occasion attempted to Try. share at least a food services director. Sharing line staff isn't logical mm -hmm. because essentially lunches were served at pretty much the same time. Right, right, right. Yeah. But um, look at districts that are using this model. 
Just just a thought. I mean, it's not a certainly isn't a, an answer. And it's then just what would they thought. do? They shuttle the food over. They do. The in area. fact, yes. Uh -huh. and you mentioned Westfield, Kathy, and did you mention somebody else to me? Too? Uh, there's many in smaller, like you're saying, in yeah. Springfield and or Boston. There's certainly more that do that because they're closer in proximity, but maybe not so much closer than ours are. Mm -hmm. um, our schools are fairly close yeah. to have a van go over with some heat, and then you really would just need a server, a table mm -hmm. and a server. Um, but I'm not suggesting that, I'm mm -hmm. just saying it's a thought. Um, mm -hmm. No, definitely worth looking into, I appreciate that. Yeah, and if it's 500 students and we do need all of this work, merchandise or equipment going forward, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's some, it's probably been there since I was eating lunch there. I always mm -hmm. loved school lunch mm -hmm. there. But, um, you know, if it's getting into that, it might be a, a, something to look at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I have a question. Um, Recent, it's been a year or two, um, a couple years now, mm -hmm. that they have this new great app that you load your money into yeah. and you pay that way. When I first started doing it with the kids, I'd have to plan the whole week. Has that hurt? I mean, it's very convenient for parents just to load apps in, but as far as planning, has that hurt the planning and wasting a lot of food because you don't know how many kids are eating? That, I would have to get that answer to you yeah. if it's had an effect on that. I know most of what I've heard has been very positive, that it is certainly, we spend a lot less time chasing down old lunch money. Oh, so okay. chasing down lunch debt. So from, I, Ms. Zach still spends an inordinate amount of time chasing down mm -hmm. outstanding lunch bills, but it's a lot less. That's mostly what I hear is yeah. that the My School well, Box I, program I like works. it because it's convenient for the parent. I just but I don't know if, they're, if they've noticed any um, additional food waste, if they're yeah. making too much. I can certainly ask that. I was just thinking that because I used to have to know in the beginning of the week which ones are you doing and I'd have to send the money for yeah. the whole week. Now I just load it up and they get lunch when they want it. <laughs> I think this oh. day, do you want it or not? Um, day by day I go. I can find that out. And then you had some other questions. Sports, music, there's yeah. specific questions around that? Or? Well, I didn't know if that was something that is at all similar do we get monies coming from other areas how does the you know if, if is that at all um i we don't charge um right now is it something you know do other schools charge mm -hmm. i think a lot of the other schools may charge is there any way to combine some of that mm -hmm. so just right off the top when you asked if it's similar so the music program and the athletic program are within the, the general fund, so they don't operate as an enterprise fund, um, and they don't operate as what we call a proprietary fund, which are like class funds, student funds, things that have a very specific purpose that are utilized solely for that purpose and owned by a particular group, like a, a class, graduating class of. Music and sports are within the general fund or the general operating budget, and we do not charge fees for those. Mm -hmm. We are unique, I think, for the most part. Most districts do. This is a conversation that's come up. And I am, if it's something that uh, I can tell you my, my thoughts on it, which are mm -hmm. just my thoughts, the budget and policy is something that ultimately is determined by the school committee. And every year we talk about this, um, mm -hmm. some years more than others. And certainly if there was something that FinCom wanted the school committee to consider or analyze, I know that they would be very amenable to doing that. Uh, so we don't. Uh, I have an example where charges, I believe it's $100 per, they probably start decreasing it if you have multiple kids. Let's say if you have one child, I believe it's $100 per sport per, per sport. So if they're a three season athlete, they're going to play $300 a year. If they have one child that's a three season athlete, they're going to a year. Those are just for general sports, not for things like hockey. There are some sports that would be more, far more expensive. People pay a lot more money for those. Hadley hasn't in the past. Uh, it's certainly something that we could look at. I don't know that, and, and I want to be careful when I say this because I'm not saying that every, every bit of revenue that we can get is certainly important, but I wonder in some cases if it almost becomes symbolic. And if you have to look at 
the benefits that you get from the thieves versus the unintended consequences. So I, and I'm speaking individually, again, budget mm -hmm. and policy are the school committee's decision, but I personally feel that the negative consequences of charging fees for extracurricular activities disproportionately impact families who struggle financially. And very often those are children who need these programs the most. Now they, they don't have like a, just like a lunch, if you don't have the money, it, you could still participate. They don't have that for sports and, and all that other stuff? They would have to set up individual policies around scholarship because unlike the lunch mm -hmm. program, which is a federally funded program, and so because it's a federally funded program, then if you meet income eligibility guidelines, the feds say that people then get free or reduced sports and, and band are not funded <coughs> that way. So the school committee would have to adopt, develop, develop, adopt, and implement a policy around uh, scholarships or mm -hmm. financial hardship. And that's not to say that that could not be done. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, I would say that sometimes I feel as though the amount of revenue that you're likely to generate feels so inconsequential in terms of the either negative feelings that families might have and mm -hmm. families might feel like wow because there are many of the families that participate in the public schools are taxpayers and they say well I you know I vote to contribute my taxes to these things including mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. I'd like to have these programs for my children mm -hmm. families that that struggle financially um, it, it may be extremely difficult for them to then have their children participate. And we have children who participate. They're three season athletes and they participate in the music program. We have, we have really involved children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would also say that for children who, for all children, these programs are really, really important. Mm -hmm. For children who um, are either, either coming from families where there is a lot of financial hardship that the positive effects of being engaged in school and extracurriculars actually is disproportionately positive as well. So once they, it has such a worse effect if they're not involved on them mm -hmm. than it does sometimes for other students, mm -hmm. and the benefits are so great. Mm -hmm. um, but we have, uh, just a couple of years ago, we did an analysis of, all right, if we charge fees for every single sport, and we set it up on a scale where once you have two kids so we, we put together a rather involved system right mm -hmm, so you wouldn't mm -hmm, you were mm -hmm. charged less if you had many kids coming through um, or playing sports at the same time and the amount of revenue that it generated again because we're so small this just well I know that this too tiny. there's problems with numbers and not mm -hmm. getting enough kids and you don't want to have that make it worse mm -hmm. so I, I, I get that well we are trying to do because we do think that we have a wonderful program mm -hmm. of extracurricular opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we have a full-time music teacher at the elementary, a full-time art program, the number of extracurricular opportunities for our Hopkins Academy students, it's pretty impressive. So we have mm -hmm. put uh, a lot of effort and energy into designing uh, kind of a, a whole recruitment, a school recruitment strategy, and that includes a special website just for recruitment, retention, an open house for that that we'll do in the spring. Mm -hmm. This website will probably be online in January. Um, we did some advertising last year. We saw a nice spike in our school choice in numbers. Uh, at the end of September in 2017, I think choice in was, I want to say 72, and on the same date this year, so it was end of and maybe it was end of September, or early October, mm -hmm. um, school choice in was 98. Mm -hmm. So we do feel as though perhaps some of those efforts have paid off. So that's a, I do have a good question about the, what you just mentioned is um, some of those great programs. Also with your weekly um, communication, and that is wonderful, and the emails and how you point out some of the recognition of some of the students mm -hmm. and how well they've done. Do you have a marketing budget that you spend, like that you could um, press releases that you set that you could send out, so that way you know it's like wow. No, we we uh, just take money from the operating budget, so we paid for some advertisements last year to do that. 
Um, we don't, I mean, there's some schools with huge marketing budgets uh, and they do great, I mean, enviable and really solid work. Uh, the school right down the road here, Chinese Immersion, has a huge marketing budget. We don't have that kind of marketing budget, so we're not going to be on NPR or, but we were able to pay for some advertisements. We were, um, we will be able to advertise again for our open house that's focused on, uh, strictly focused on recruitment this coming spring. Mm -hmm. And we have been able to invest because we got a, a really great deal from somebody who wanted to help us with marketing, um, a pretty minimal amount to help us develop this recruitment website. Do you have a person that you? That does that? I mean, they can do marketing for you? Not in-house, no. We've, no, we don't have that in-house. I have a question about the figures about um, the, the number of students that are choice in. Mm -hmm. <coughs> does that, um, the 72 and the 98, does that, um, did that take into account the students that, that choice out, or are there any students No, 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 so that's not your net. That was just my, oh. your choice in numbers. Mm -hmm. And the choice out numbers I don't have right off the top of my head, but I, I'll definitely have all the charts for you at budget time. Okay. No, I, yeah. I'm just curious. I do believe we had a decline in choice out, but again, I'll have all your, oh. um, but that's not your net. And I'm talking strictly choice, not cho choosing to another, what I call comparable public school, not a specialized public oh, okay. charter. Mm -hmm. So I'm not including, it's just net of choice like Northampton versus Hadley or Hadley versus Amherst. I see. Okay. Just going back to the sports and the music, the. Um, federal government does have the, um, it's called consent to share form, and that is something that if you are ineligible for your reduced person, you have to, um, the school has a form that says I will take part in the music or the sports, and generally speaking, the school will then give that student the free or reduced rate. It's a policy that mm -hmm. the um, school committee would make up, but I'm just saying that they would not be left behind. Generally speaking, the federal government knows that, our state knows that, and they literally have a template, and it's called share, do share information document. And so if you're eligible for a free or reduced lunch, you would then get that from your director, would send that to the family saying you've just, you're eligible for free or reduced, here's your share document, and you can choose transportation, whatever your school has, and that document would then be um, used as information, so you might then not call it a scholarship, but you do have a great booster club, and the booster club would then maybe say, let's pay for the kids that are free and reduced, and then the other children could pay on their own mm -hmm. for whatever the program it is, if we're talking fees. And also there's that point that you could make enough money and not be eligible for free and reduced, but you could do a waiver that says, I'm really going through a hard time right now, and case by case, if they don't, if their government guideline eligibility isn't there, but something else makes them having a hard time, then it could be up to mm -hmm. your committee of whatever sort. And again, the Mother's Club gives a good amount of money and does great things for this town, and so does the Booster Club, or has anyway. I'm not sure how they're oh, doing they do. now. They do. So I wanted to mention the them as far as your fees, because they, they're fantastic. We don't want to lose and, them aside. And that's part of the reason that even though, because we're not, we're not generating revenue for these programs, it's easy to just focus solely on the expenses. But those expenses would be more if it weren't for right. groups like the Boosters Club, like Hadley Mother's Club. In this case, the Sports Booster and the Music Booster. Mm -hmm. They help with field trips, they help with uniforms, they help with equipment, they contributed to the scoreboard. I mean, mm -hmm. there are many, I don't think we've brought a sports capital item forward since I've been here. The Booster Club consistently kind of shows music up and supports those things. Mm -hmm. And Music Booster similarly is quite helpful. Mm -hmm. So was there any, has there ever been any talk about sharing? I know that, um, I mean, re, you know, regionalize a little bit. So say we do soccer here and maybe Hatfield does track or something. So we do have co-ops. Um, and so if there's a sports program that we don't offer here, mm -hmm. then students can co-op into a school that offers that. So I know that we have co-ops for sports like football, obviously students I believe go to Amherst, and I should know off the top of my head, I really, I, I'd have to ask Mr. Sudnick, mm -hmm. I can get you a list of them. And I do know that we do some co-ops, I think for lacrosse also. Field hockey, I think it's Field Hatfield. hockey, maybe that's what Hatfield. I wanted to say, field hockey and Hatfield, thank you. Yeah, golf, um, do you have golf teams? We do have a golf okay. team, yeah, so we don't co-op for golf. Oh yeah, you guys just want to stay. Yeah. Good for you. So. Oh, I, I was just thinking too, maybe um, instead, 
just because of numbers always seem to be an issue sometimes mm -hmm. with some of the sports. Mm -hmm. It's like you're bringing up a lot of, sometimes you have middle schoolers playing on a varsity mm -hmm. level because there's not enough kids. Mm -hmm. So to be as competitive, if say you have a school like Hatfield that has the same issue and we have the same issue, if you combine the both, you know, and one, one did boys soccer, one did girls soccer, I'm just saying maybe you got more students um, things like that. Do you, I didn't has know. the percentage of athletes gone down? Perce the issue would be the percentage as a percentage of student body hasn't decreased, but the problem is overall student body has decreased, right? So I that's see. what, so we don't, our participation rates remain pretty stable across all extracurricular activities. Our students are really involved. Yeah, I just gave are. a report Last month I gave uh, a report, I try to do it twice a year, to the school committee of all the extracurricular opportunities and, and what students do in them. Um, so students are really are very engaged, participation rate stays pretty stable, but overall declining enrollment is, is what it is, not fewer students participating as a percentage of student body. Just with sense. all of the options, you know, football yeah. and so it might have just taken, I know with Park and Rack it was like, wait, there's so many other places to go, it's hard yes. to hold yeah. them in-house when there's mm -hmm. so many other options, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. with us just having X number amount of sports, of course, we don't have the lacrosse or the hockey, or girls hockey, you know, all of these other things that could lead to scholarships and then mm -hmm. college going forward and that sort of thing, I think is also a pull beside of participation goes down because of those pulls, yeah. also, I'm sure. Although our, our it's amazing. I just put in a weekly email. That was a couple of weeks ago. Where I listed all the kids right now who are playing college sports. Yeah. Who graduated? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't yeah. Good. Pull it up. Yeah. It was. It was surprising. A graduating class of how many of them are actually. Did a good run of basketball games. players yeah, there. I know. Yeah. Cross sports, though. Basketball, <laughs> baseball. Like. Yeah. No, Some of great. them are doing For both such a in college. School. <laughs> yeah. It was like, wow, there's a yeah, lot of amazing. athletes listed there, graduates. Yeah. So, like a school like the Chinese mm -hmm. immersion school that doesn't have, like they don't, they don't have enough um, kids that that they can even form a team. Could could they come to our school? Maybe we charge a fee. Is there a way to do something like that? I'm sure if if MIA allows anything like that, we've I've met with. Richard and I met with Kathy, the executive director and the principal over at Chinese Immersion. We've talked about, in the past, sharing personnel. We've talked about sharing services in the past. So we're amenable to any kind of cooperative agreements yeah. that make sense and that are within any guidelines that govern, the, govern those uh, opportunities. Our athletic director and Eric talk a lot mm -hmm. and um, we do share some information mm -hmm. at the moment um, and we are MIA which require which allows you to do co-op as, as if you're if you don't have enough students on one team you can co-op we have hockey players co-oping and so on but um, you could do a mixed team there's some schools in Springfield that do that between schools because they just don't have enough for one team mm -hmm. if you do have enough for one team then it gets a little sticky with MIA because then it's kind of like let's pull them from over there right. the good ones let's get Hopkins <laughs> over here you know so but but and I'm happy to explore any of these yeah. I'm just not I mean certainly you're you're probably more of an expert on this than I am I would defer to Mr. Sunday yeah and he's he's been great yeah. and very helpful with some of our questions with our new AD it's been great are there any other things like the uh, cafe, like the uh, um, kitchen, that would be similar to the kitchen that we wouldn't know, you know, that's like that program? That, I'm trying to think in terms of enterprise funds. Let me just run through all of our revolving funds. No, that's the only one, I think, that's technically, even though it, it's called that, okay. it doesn't operate like that because okay. it is not generating enough revenue to cover expenses. Sure. So it's an enterprise fund in name only. And uh, no, no, we don't have other ones like that. We have revolving accounts, so that means that money can, like athletics, you know, we collect fees or student activity funds, actually that's a proprietary fund, but we have money that we collect revenue and then we spend revenue out of those funds, but mm. nothing else like the, the food service program. And since you're here, if, if you don't mind, and I don't think this is actually the school budget, but mm -hmm. you might be an expert at this kind of stuff. Um, we talked a little bit about the Hadley kids you know how we're the park and rec is taking that over mm -hmm. 
do you, for just in your opinion, see any like is there liability for the town? I mean, would did you have, you you had some good questions at yeah, one point? Yeah, some liability and or, I mean, now that it's park and rec, it's a town entity. Mm -hmm. But when it wasn't, that was a good revenue source and or some schools do use it as a revenue source in house. Um, you know, talking about yeah. discrepancies, that might be a great way to beef up some in-house monies, um, you know, rental for the space or whatnot. Um, I don't know now that it's park and rec or will, or maybe, I don't know if that's gone through, but um, in that consideration, let's hope that it park and rec takes it over so it, the money stay in the town in a sense, but you are sort of slightly different with your budget. Is there any monies that you would or consider keeping on your own? Or, I mean, now that it's park and rec, it's sort of a different story. But yeah, so had previously the kids they had, had a lot of money. Right, so they had approached the schools mm -hmm. and asked if we might be interested. And in that first meeting, I had actually suggested that perhaps they have a conversation with Park and Rec. Mm -hmm. I knew from long conversation when you yeah, were running Park right. and Rec For sure. that um, having a dedicated and healthy revenue stream was really important to the mm -hmm. sustainability of the park and rec program i'm exactly. a big believer in those programs i think they're important for communities and for families absolutely um the the school department uh is uh, this town is very generous and invests well in education we're very appreciative of that um, so it just seemed logical and fair that if there was another town department that could benefit from those revenues that that seemed like it made sense and so in terms of charging anything we're we're going to cover expenses but we're not going to charge it's another town department now yeah, yeah right a lot of time wasted there for a minute but mm -hmm. <laughs> or 15 years whatever it was <laughs> but you know what I mean I just mm -hmm. was curious like if that and there's a lot there's a chunk of change going from point A to point B and maybe some of that you might consider for yourself to buy your refrigerator with you know I mean oh that's kids not our money. Is not, I don't have yeah I don't right I know I guess I'm not maybe following it could be reconsidered right because there's a good chunk of change and I just think that maybe it I don't know. I, I, you know. It's hard for me to talk about because it, it would be mm -hmm. nice for a park and rec to have that money, but I'm just yeah. trying to be objective and say. So yeah. right now they're still working out the legalities of how to transfer. 501 to a, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. We're not there yet. Right. But a 501 could give a donation to a school, right? Uh, yes, they could. Yeah. So I'm just, it's that's what I'm saying. So long as it's within our charter. Yeah. Just <coughs> talking money, that's all, not personal or department to department, just money. That was, there was a lot of years they were in your building. Because you do charge rent, to, would you charge, because they're still in the building, you charge rent, kind of like, it's, I'm thinking almost like, you know, moving money around, like, um, David charges the, you know, water department for the administrative costs, right? Because it makes sense. So you have administrative costs for almost for that group. Am I right? It's time to count. Yeah, so this is the end of year report that you and I worked on a couple of years back. Uh, so we have an agreement between the Hadley School District and the town of Hadley about how the end of year reconciliations are, are worked out in order to meet. And I may be using the wrong nomenclature, so feel free to correct me if I'm right. Hmm. Uh, that uh, it uh, goes towards uh, counting towards our uh, at school spending. Is that right? Yes, mm -hmm. school spending. Good. Mm -hmm. So we have that in place already. Okay. Yeah. And now that it's town to town, the school's yeah. been really generous with another department called Park and Rec. Yeah. For we're first because we have to have practice and that sort of thing. But then Park and Rec has always opened doors to the sure. school's always opened doors to Park and Rec. So it's sort of a yesterday kind of conversation, I think, with the rent. Um, but if, in fact, it falls through, it could be a consideration just for a slight amount of revenue monthly. Because they, they do well. Yeah. Um, so just to, just to quickly touch back again on, on marketing, do you think it would be, is there a way that maybe, the, is there something that the town could do to help out? I mean, is there some, I'm just thinking, and maybe David, you could 
chime in if, you think, if you'd like, but I just think that there's, there's so many positives on the school and what the school does. I just don't know if it's, is, is, it, is it out there enough? I mean, you, you did a little bit and you saw uh, mm -hmm. a, a nice positive take, you know. So if we did a little, you know, did a little more and, and, and showed all these students and, and where they're going, I mean, in more press releases, it would be amazing. So we are certainly working on that on the school end. I've talked a little bit on occasion at department chairs about um, maybe thinking about marketing around the entire town. I mean, I, I think the schools are wonderful. I would I would argue that this is a wonderful town. Mm -hmm. That's some of the things that you've indicated, whether it's the generosity of philanthropic organizations like Hadley Mothers Club, like Booster Clubs, like Helping Hearts, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. The people who work here, uh, Mr. Nyhart helping get that pavilion off the ground, something the entire community that can enjoy, and that was the PTO and, and Mr. Nyhart that made that happen. Mm -hmm. Something the community can enjoy, not just the schools. That there's, I would, I would say that there's, the entire town can be marketed in terms of a place where you want to do business, where you want to invest, where you want to live, and where you want to raise children. I mean, I certainly want people to think this is a place you want to move and raise children. Your Chapter 70 money, at the end of the day, has to do with the number of school-aged children that live here, and that's a huge decline that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. These families with young children, you just don't have kids living in this town anymore. Can and so houses. We, they yeah. can't afford it. I mean, million our kids houses. Love, would love to come back here, and, and that's one of, the, one of the things that we need to advertise. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids leave. And they always say, oh, I've got to find something better. But after time, they realize what they actually had. Yeah. When, because they don't know what they had until they go out. Mm -hmm. But when they come, come back, they want to come back, but they can't. Mm -hmm. We have, unfortunately, and it is a balancing act, because we have tried to keep the subdivisions out and the big developments. Mm -hmm. Because it is. It's a real balance. Yeah that you have to worry about because we all know that every kid that we have costs a lot of money to put through school. But we're at that point now, our kids can't come back here. It's mm -hmm. We've overpriced them out and it's sad. Mm -hmm. uh, because I have three. Two of them would love to be here mm -hmm. if they could. Yeah, I think it's a, it, the entire town could be yes. marketed. I, yes. I just, I really, yeah. I appreciate what you yeah. say about the schools, but I would say the programs yeah. across this town, the groups, the people, the departments, public safety, this is a really wonderful I know. Town. Well, when I, mm -hmm. when we first moved here, I mean, my husband's from here, but I wasn't, and he was out in Berkshires, and we moved here just for the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we moved here when the kids were going into school just for the school system. Most and of us I did that. Yeah. And I didn't want to go to, I, you know, Sunderland was cheaper, some of the others, but I didn't want to risk the school choice and not being able to get in. So we did it. Mm -hmm. Just to get into school. So, I mean, I just think they're awesome. And I think so that. <laughs> and it's been that way for 40 years. Yeah. 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 That's a good thing about it. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. That's Absolutely. right. Because I, when we got out of college, we wanted to come here. We did not want to go to Amherst. Mm -hmm. All of our friends went to Amherst. Mm -hmm. Now they regret it. They wish they were here mm -hmm. because of the school system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, For sure. It is. Mm -hmm. We'll keep at it. We'll keep at those efforts. And um, like I said, though, I would, I would tout the, the wonderfulness. How's that for a word from the leader of your educational <laughs> system? <laughs> <laughs> well, the wonderful -icity of your entire town. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we like we we want to help and we want to, yeah. to do Thank more, you. but you know, obviously, we only have so much money to move around, oh, and we're trying to figure out creative ways and see if there's anything else. And we're constantly looking at the school because we want to support it. So I know that you guys are always very helpful. Thank you for that idea about the satellite kitchens. I will look. You know, that. I don't want to. Yeah, just look into Maybe it. Maybe ask the building inspector if we can put the satellite kitchen in. What's this building right <laughs> here? <laughs> yeah, it's <Yeah. Russell's laughs> <Russell's laughs> <Russell's laughs> <Russell's laughs> your favorite building in Russell School. My favorite building. <laughs> Is that, is, is there anything else I can get yeah. for you you need? No, I appreciate it. it. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. We'll get a trailer like the uh, DPW. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so when well, the DPW is finished with theirs, you can send it over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> thanks for coming, Tim. I, and what we wanted to do with, uh, is just kind of have an idea of, 
um, what your priorities are for the um, buildings and you know maintenance and you know we have to start thinking about you know I know that we wanted to you know paint town hall and it didn't work out with CPA but so we have to start thinking about some of these funds and the maintenance and in and, and what your I was kind of looking at a priority list that you yeah. have so I mean when we were uh, requested to the select board uh, our, our main focus was to look at all the buildings and and we decided that the main crux at the very beginning and we're on our fourth year was to get the buildings back into some get get the maintenance up which we've done and the nice thing is we have put in probably uh, a little over eight hundred thousand dollars into our buildings we've done some good things and there's still a list on all the buildings that we have and we pray we go through that every year and one of the first things that we did was um, by directive of the select board was to look at uh, North Hadley Hall and, and as you know it was uh, considered to be sold and we went through and got got permission to follow that through um, that hasn't happened um, it's it's still in the in the works uh, we hope at some point very shortly that that will come to fruition so we have that away from us those bills but we are looking at each and we do it every year we look at each building uh, what its use is going to be if it's a good use for now and how much money needs to be spent to keep that department or its use within that building we were put on hold a little bit with the the flip-flop of the buildings that we had uh, certainly as we all know which is really nice now that we have now some direction with with the buildings uh, the, we're going to be meeting with the select board they're going to make the final decision in regards to uh, how we're going to approach the buildings uh, the, the building projects or are we going to do them together or are we going to do them separately that in itself I think that's and the select board has asked us to look at that as the next big project and it will be a big project it's a lot of um, logistics if we do them together do we save enough money and there's going to be a lot of discussion back and forth on that if that's the case we're going to have to move everybody out of the senior center mm -hmm. so we can demolish that there's we're starting that process right now looking at the logistics and the timetable uh, both the library and everybody's looking at that in their own departments the uh, so th I think that's going to be our main task our main focus for the next uh, several months to help the town figure out what is the best process how we go forward what the dollar figures are going to be and because either way there's there has to be money spent mm -hmm. so one of the things that the select board had asked of us a number of months ago was do we feel that we could put more departments in this building the town hall we felt we could we came up with a scenario um, through a department head meeting uh, we all discussed it uh, we asked for a lot of input back we actually didn't get much back uh, there was some suggestions and some things that we actually forgot about so uh, which one of the things that uh, is is critical right now is storage we were under the belief that the planning board had reduced their storage needs by getting the um, scanner and and scanning all their their drawings re thus reducing a tremendous amount of storage that hasn't happened yet and there are some valid reasons why that hasn't happened so that's one thing we're going to have to look at and, and it's critical right now we we have a game plan to put people in here but 
but it, it lacks a lot of storage for some of those departments, including mine. I mean, if you go upstairs, I have a huge room just stuffed with probably over a quarter million documents. Now, is there a way, I mean, as far as moving people over here, but renting a space? I know that in the banking, what uh, we've done is, because you have to keep some, so much storage for so long, we have off-site, and everything's in boxes and labeled, and they ship them out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are certainly a lot of options that we're going to have to look at. Uh, yeah. I mean, when you store things off-site, it, it creates one of those logistic things if you need it. Sure, to that's go over true. and get it. That's always the problem. Most of our departments that are over there in the senior center right now, the old hooker school, work at night. So when they're doing whatever they're doing, mm. it's at night. Mm. So can you get to that storage facility? Mm. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about uh, in 15 minutes is, is that one issue, which is critical. Uh, if we bring everybody here, can we come up with a solution for storage? I think we can to some point. Um, I think that's going to be mm -hmm. an, a, a real, it, it's going to either work or it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, you, as you might be aware, the senior center is looking at the church. I think that's an incredible mm -hmm viable option if it mm -hmm. all works out. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going to have to go through it and uh, with, the, with the cooperation of everybody and, and give the select board a lot of our suggestions and that they ultimately they're going to have to make a decision on how they're going to go forward with it. But the first, their first task is do they put the projects together? And that's going to be critical for us to go forward with helping the select board come up with a game plan on who goes where and how and when. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing that. And the building them. next door? The Russell School? Right. Uh, yeah, we were approached, could, do we, did we feel that uh, that could be utilized in any way? And we, we as a board voted on it as no. Mm -hmm. it, there's too many things wrong with it right now uh, because we don't have a, a heating system that really works. That was on its last leg. The, there's not been tube wiring in there. There's mm -hmm. asbestos in there. Um, it's, it's in very bad shape. The roof is starting to leak a little bit, but you know we're, we have monies every year to fix that. Can we use it for storage? Uh, the fire department, and I agree with our fire chief, that is the last place you want to store stuff. <laughs> because one, you, got, you don't have heat. You, you're going to have induced mold. Mm -hmm. You have environmental issues there. And totally unsafe mm -hmm. to bring a lot of combustibles into a building <laughs> that has absolutely no, nothing to uh, protect mm -hmm. it. We don't have electricity mm -hmm. in there, so there's no true real alarm system right now, mm -hmm. other than a very skeletal system. So no, uh, could we do something? Yes, but I think the amount of money that we have to put in there would be best to look at other alternatives. I think there are some alternatives that we could utilize first. It's going to cost us some money, and you know we're going to have to. Well, figure out where, where those funds are going to come from. And we don't have anything left. We used to put all the rent away that wasn't for that building towards a separate account for that building, and we don't have that anymore, Yeah, we correct? have 20000 left, and all of that money is earmarked for projects in the public safety complex uh, and, uh, and uh, the, the highway garage. So yeah, we still have several mm -hmm. small projects that we want to try to finish up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you're only if, talking about the period between when you know the um, the senior center has to be vacated and when it gets built, so we're only talking about a year, right? Or not even? Is not that really. Right? Not because the seniors are moving. We have a place for them, but we don't have a place for park and rec. We don't have a oh, place right. for yeah. Yeah, the, yeah that's the oh, we have to. Board. We have to sort of come up with something yeah. 
permanent I see. Right, until yeah. we go to the next phase of whatever we're going to do. Because think about it, why did everybody move out? There's not, really not enough space over time. But I think we can be creative too. One of the things that we brought up at the department head meeting, I think we have to, have to come up with alternative solutions on how we do some of our business. If you go into a lot of these offices, everybody has a desk. Today, nobody has desks. You don't use desks. Everybody's on a laptop. I think we have to start really sitting back and saying, hey, all right, we've done it like this for how many years? Maybe, maybe it's about time we start looking at creative ways and thinking about nights on who does what. Maybe, maybe if we share offices more, uh, being around a table instead of these desks, and with our laptops, we can still do the work in a lot less space. Mm -hmm. We, you know, and certainly the select board has looked at one of our big problems, storage of material, of all these documents. We have to get into a networking system. We, we're so far behind on our computer systems that if we get that up and running in the next few years. I think it's going to be extremely helpful. Of course that's going to be very costly. <coughs> David and I looked at my office. Like I said, I have I have a huge back room full of like a, a really quarter of a million pages of documentation. I have 21 filing cabinets back there and endless amounts of drawing. How many times do I actually look at that stuff? Very seldom. But by law, I have to keep it. Mm -hmm. And there's a big question as do we have to keep a paper uh, copy of it? And I don't think we have to on all fronts for some of the stuff we do. But we have to start looking at that. Those are the ways we can really start being able to go forward with utilizing this building for the time being and getting everybody back into here. And I think it, the, there's some positive things about getting everybody back in the same building, mm -hmm. that there's a little bit more communication between some of the mm -hmm. departments. Sure. But I'll just to add on to that, uh, one of the things that we're exploring <coughs> is a possible grant which would be submitted in February using the document retrieval system, the management system that the city of Northampton currently owns and they're willing to share with us. There's a regionalization grant which we may apply to. So we're going to have an exploratory conversation with Northampton on Thursday, this Thursday, about managing all these documents and seeing if we can't do it collaboratively with a, with a system that's already set up and they've already worked out all the problems and all the bugs. Great. Yeah, well, I think we have a creative way of getting most everybody back in here. We have to work on the storage. The other big issue that the Municipal Building Committee, and I'll find to another subject that we keep on bringing up, is the maintenance budget. Mm -hmm. We really want to make sure it's under one, one heading everything there so we can we can juggle the money back and forth and we have it all listed okay. and we come up with what our thought was if, if if there was a possible way that we come up with a figure and we've come up with quarter of a million every year if we budget two hundred fifty thousand dollars every year for maintenance of all the buildings start getting the the uh, building maintenance director up and running better than it is right now, allowing him through, through the committee to come up with a priority list of what needs to be done and what building, present it to you, present it to the select board, get it authorized, and then go forward with those. Uh, and we're kind of haphazard right now, we're bouncing back and forth. 
and it's been based on what money we feel that we can get mm. and we I, and again we keep on arguing we have to get away from that type of um, thought and say look if you want these buildings to last we're going to mm -hmm. have some ni nice new buildings right and it's yeah. time and you start looking at uh, out into the private sector mm -hmm. and how much money they budget there are percentages that are all set with regard to what you put forward for maintenance budgets mm -hmm. based on the price and the type of building this is what you should be spending between sometimes it's um, five percent just ten percent depending on per what year. type of building it is per year per year yeah okay yeah but we have I think to, that's a great idea. I we think have it's to really get there. A good idea. I think, you know, I, I feel like just as a nation, you know, like this first half of this decade was so traumatic and, and budget just got, you know, bare boned. And so we need to come out of that mentality and start taking care of the historic especially buildings that um, that that have suffered from not mm -hmm. not having funding, funding. during this sure. difficult time. So I, I love that you're thinking about that, about setting up a fund so that we can maintain our buildings on a, an annual basis and not just as an emergency putting out fire kind of basis. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, Thank I you. think that's a good idea. I mean, right now it seems like, so we, we fund the, um, the maintenance, but then at the end of the year it gets thrown back into free cash, which you don't use. It would be nice to see, you know, leave that so alone, that. Mm -hmm. almost in a way, and let that grow a little bit as for for the painting of town hall or something to come, you know, when yep. we need it. Many what many it, years, I think, I, you know, we do have a unified maintenance budget, it's the 490 budget, it's under right. the Department of Public Works. Every year we increase it by something on the order of twenty thousand dollars every year. A lot of that money doesn't get spent, so, you know. It just gets put back into free cash. It gets put back to free cash, but we need to be spending that, you know. You well. mentioned a figure of $250,000, but we're not there. In we're not going to be there for a while. Imagination, but, uh, you know, so we, you we think can be a little bit more aggressive with that budget. If we have a need, we should be using that budget to address. Well, I, I mean, I don't see why. Why can't we? Why do we have to put it always back to free cash? Why can't we? Because that's a lot. Well, can we open up another fund of some sort to keep it there? You could do it as an, uh, an article. That article would uh, not expire at the end of the fiscal year. So that's one way of doing it. Because I don't want it to be feel like, oh, I better use it. Well, let it build a little bit, right. and then when you need the town hall painted, because that's a big, you know, it's price tag. Let people. it build, let it build. But what happens is, you know, it's if you don't use it, you lose it. And then and sometimes we we need the money, so if it's there, we're going to take it because we need it to pay for something else. But if it, I feel like if it if it builds up a little bit. So I'm it. happy to work with you to come up with the financial mechanism. Achieve this goal. Um, Great. I'm not seeing a terribly straight line between here and where we need to be. Okay. But uh, we can work out. Okay. For right now, it's a little difficult to know how much money there is. Yeah. Well, there's not there's not much money <laughs> up there, but I mean, if we could do a little at a time, I just know that um, I. I, I see the town hall. I wish we could have painted it with the CPA funds, and mm -hmm. and now I know that is one big price tag that we need to start looking at at other ways. And and um, so is the problem that we're not spending the money some sort of communication problem between what we need and the money that we have? Well, I. Uh, or do we not need it? We do need it. Um, I, I think it. It's a little bit bigger picture, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it goes back how we first set up the whole program, got under DPW. Uh, there was thoughts that 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 might not have been the best place for it. I mean, we have our own personal feelings on how this can be run. There's difference of opinion on how it should be run and who's supposed to oversee it. Um, mm -hmm. It did get muddied up a little bit in TPW, trying to find the fund, what the funds are, where they were. 
I mean, there's a lot of um, stuff there. I, is it anybody's fault or anything? It's just, no, it's just the way it was, and I, I think we can do a lot better at it. Uh, right, I mean, if you, there's, there's nobody really knows. I mean, I, if you ask me right now how much money there is, I don't know how much money there is. Yeah, Have I asked? If he's saying there's a dedicated pile of it somewhere, <laughs> um, maybe we need to have some sort of protocol where we check in about that. Mm -hmm. or yeah, something. so we, we do, uh, every month mm -hmm. we get the expenditure mm -hmm. reports from the accountant and that would have, that would have the detail in it. And that's a problem. When was the last time we got one? I just got one. Yeah, and when was the last time before that? Uh, I don't Did, remember. Yeah, the, David, that's one of the biggest problems that we have here. Mm -hmm. We do not get those, and we ask and ask and ask. I am sorry, so, but it Tim, doesn't work. a whole pile of them right here. I mean, I'm sorry, we don't need to get into an argument on this, but if you need the information, we can get the information to you. If you're not getting the reports. It doesn't come from the accountant, I tell you that right now. I've asked for my budget three times. Sorry. It's a broken system. I'm sorry to say, but it's broken. Mm. <clears throat> so, um, and, and just to, to jump back at the building at Russell School, do you have you um, thought of uh, plans to do anything else with the building? I mean, yeah, to so, get rid of it, or so I what? <laughs> the selectmen have asked of us is. Uh, we had from, we've had some estimates in the past, so we were in, uh, requested to use the architectural professional services that we have and update those, which we've done, okay? We're going to be discussing that um, on the 3rd, and then we'll be presenting that at some point to the uh, select board mm -hmm. on what this is what we're looking at for a price tag to mm -hmm. bring that building back. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a lot. There was a lot of upfront um, need to figure out what could could be the building could be used for without getting into huge, huge expenses mm -hmm. on the construction of the building. So, so we we do have those yeah, figures. Plans. What we want to do is present it to the select board. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel that, and I'm sure the select board thinks that everybody does, we need a non-binding um, vote to the residents to, to make that decision. Do we keep the building as a town building? Mm -hmm. We have an idea what could be, it could be used for. It's a very, the problem that we're going to be faced with is it's going to be very limited in what can be used the building could be used for because of building code issues and everything. Mm -hmm. But there are some, you know, we, we, we can use it. But it's going to be a huge price tag. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the big, yeah. the big decision. It's going to be more than it would cost to build a new building. But there's a lot of us that feel <laughs> That mm -hmm. it's a building. It's a beautiful building. It's that that is architecturally history. significant is. for the town. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't do us. It doesn't do anybody any good just to sit there and just yeah, start to fall uh, apart. Yeah. And it's that. getting to the point that we do have to make that decision, yeah. because it it'll, it's getting to to the time that we're not going to be able to bring it back, it, yeah. mm -hmm. and all we're going to be able to do is sell the bricks to everybody. Yeah, yes. I, I really hope that we can muster the will to preserve and improve that building and, you know, incorporate it. So we'll have a price tag on what it would cost the town to do it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot less of what's done through the private sector. And Why? that's good. Why is that? Because we're failing wage and everything costs so much more for the town right. to do. That's it's just the way things are. You mean selling it to someone private? Sell it with historical restri like restri like you restrictions. Do it yes. Kathy Hall, but that fell through. Yeah, that's hopefully that'll still happen. Okay. But yeah. But we, yeah. We could sell it with historical restrictions, saying that it has to stay 
looking like it does, mm -hmm. and, but it'll be owned by private sector. Okay. Me right. too. I have another meeting. Feel free to stay in the sort of office. Don't worry about locking up. I have to meet with the Board of Health on the public hearing on two matters. Okay. So I shall leave you. And Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Questions, then follow up. Thank you. Feel free to talk to me. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. I for can't wait to hear that coming. report. Yeah. You know, what it's, um, I, I just feel so strongly that it should remain a piece of paddling. And there's a lot of us that do, but it's mm -hmm. going to cost some yeah. doll big dollars. Yeah. I had one um, resident in town asking about that today that came to my office. And he was so far off the mark yeah. on how much mm -hmm. it will cost. Right. And I said, it's, yeah. Look at the way it's constructed. I mean, mm -hmm. go look at it closely. I mean, it's it's just it's starting to do this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you got to and to build it from the ground up is very di very difficult. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there would be any state funds for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We can always <laughs> go for it, but those yeah. days are gone. Yeah. Uh, there really is. Yeah. yeah, there was a time when we valued preserving our historical, you know, landmarks. It seems like you know, money is just so tight now. It's so tight on the old fronts, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I and then, this town and we, their last building that we did do that was the um, one room schoolhouse down on Hockenham. Mm -hmm. And the, that is such a nightmare of a system on the documentation and oh, all that yeah. you have to do. Yeah. Oh, no, no way. We're going. Yeah. It was unbelievable the documentation and the amount of time you have to spend on photographing every mm. single thing, and then anything that's used, you have to go and document all the way back to its source on a lot of stuff. So it got to be pretty cumbersome mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You kind of wish you had money, but yeah. sometimes that money it comes at a pretty big price too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can do it in house if we want to, but it's going to cost. Yeah. Well, I, my fingers are, are crossed because I really think it's a, a Every, kind of a central part of our, our town. It's an extremely unique building. Uh, there's only 12 of them built like that in the entire country. It's very unique in itself. On, on the design of it because the exterior walls uh, and the roof are separate from the interior structure and the reason is because it's so heavy on the outside it can do this float up and down because they knew that the water table mm -hmm. is where it is okay. it's, it's just below the, the foundation but it's pretty unique mm -hmm. Well, please uh, keep us, uh, we just want to keep up to date with uh, if if you're going to start, if you're going to have a project, we're going to need to start putting money away. You know, we need to start focusing on how we're going to help you yeah, save no, for... We, um, need to, we need to go to that. Yeah, working this article is, we should do that mm -hmm. so that the money is in one spot. Yeah. We can stay there and not be used again. So... Roll All over, right. roll over, roll over those dollars. Yeah. My my airline miles roll over. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This will give you a lot of miles. Thank you. <laughs> but we should not as many as we want. Together more often. I mean, yeah, I absolutely. Think it'd be very helpful. I think so. Not a lot of funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Tony, does anybody else have anything else for tonight? No. no. Thank One you thing I was going to bring up with you guys is Thanks. I know what the last Thanks. minute on the last before the last town meeting main town meeting, not the special town meeting. You know, you guys kind of wanted to bring in some stuff on uh, maybe a human resources person, maybe an IT person, mm -hmm. maybe a financial person. Mm -hmm. You know, where what, it's February is when we have to have things in. If we wanted to make any changes in town government or add staff or anything like that, and just wondering if you guys have any thoughts on, you know, doing anything along those lines. Well, we, ta um, we talked about it quite a bit, a little bit with prior committee yeah. when we had a, a, a different group here. Yeah. It was a big focus. 
Um, we spent some time talking about it. It was some people's uh, focus to get that and to focus on an override. Yeah. There was a lot of questions and a, and a lot of homework to be done with that. You know, okay, we have an IT person. Who are they going to report to? How much money are we going to need? Um, you know, where are we going to put them? What are we going to? The whole like yeah. a whole lot of questions with that. Um, do we need it? Absolutely. How much money are we going to save? I don't know, but mm -hmm. I'm sure we will. Right, mm -hmm. and so there was the um, the financial person, the HR person. Mm -hmm. We definitely, I think, all feel a lot of people feel that there's a big need for it. I don't think we would be ready to ever go to an override unless we had done our homework. Yeah. So I think one of the things that I know that we it was talked about at one point was to get a new committee formed and to have to with the with the departments and to start to review those types of you know, to review the departments. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, reviewing the departments, reviewing wages, reviewing, you know, who reports to who, yeah. um, whether that be even if we have to, we t I think um, the form of government might even be involved in that, you know, it would be a good spot. It was talked about, it, the form of government, I thought it was, uh, um, we had some speakers come in, it was very, very nicely done, I thought it was very interesting. Um, uh, town manager versus a town administrator. Um, seeing if we, you know, we're not. I'm not thinking going towards something like Amherst, but yeah. something to do with what. Um, what does the town manager? What what can he do? What are you know? What is he allowed to do? What are what is this department head allowed to do to make things move a little smoother? You know, in some ways. But I think that committee would be a good committee to do the homework on all that mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the name? Of, what would be the name of the committee? That I don't think it was formed yet, but it was talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, there we are, the are going to. We just voted to do the wage study um, as a starting point uh, in the town, and I don't know where the status of that is. I'd have to ask David to see what we can do to kind of move that ahead or find a third party to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it seemed we had enough money to pay someone to do it. So, uh, you know, that could be part of it, but trying to form this committee might be good. Well, I think they could oversee it. Mm -hmm. You know, they could be the one um, that could say, you know, maybe David might help, but they could, someone could say, we're going to work with this person, an outside source. I don't think that a committee of um, volunteers is going to be calling oh, no. all the no. places, but they could they could be the one um, that would form. I just um, the the last committee I had worked on for a working committee like that was the ambulance committee, and it worked so well yeah. on on find, go, having other town leaders come in, give presentations, taking notes, and then they 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 made some good decisions in the pro they listed the pros and the cons and it, it, I mean it, it seemed like it it worked very smoothly mm -hmm. and I would think that um, this the town could use something like that to look at all the departments yeah, yeah. I don't um, I think that definitely would like to see you know I mentioned to David I'd like to you know any type of representation from someone from the finance committee would you know, definitely yeah. I think be great to help out with that okay so are you thinking that a committee would then like interview all the departments to see if they need an IT person and then an, well, the same committee would do that for the HR they would ask or? the department head to come over and they might say to the department head um, who do you have what are you running you know what 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 are your needs what are you kind of like job descriptions yeah yeah what, what do you spend on outside services or? yeah yeah, exactly. something like that. Could we that. just do yeah, that, yeah, like Survey so. Monkey, and then like, and yeah, then right. Survey Monkey on all the departments, and then there's a department head meeting, or the select board meeting. You just show up and talk about it because, I mean, committees after committee. I get what you're saying, and I completely understand homework. But yeah, yeah. what happens is things get lost in translation, and then all of a sudden it's six months from now, and we forgot we didn't get that deadline, and we didn't. You know, speaking from experience, it's 
tough, mm -hmm. right? Because there's a lot of people and everybody's trying to do their job mm -hmm. and not a whole lot of time to just talk about whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We did a computer analysis. They, we have all that information somewhere. Now I'm sure they have different computer programs from the time we all did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not sure what came out of that. But, you know, so we've already, I mean, the departments have already sort of done a lot of that work. I think now it could be good to have a forum with the departments and you know you, you have great people working here and I think they all have good advice because they're all in it every day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's hard to get the select board because you all have other jobs yeah, yeah, yeah right so come to a department head meeting at 11 o'clock on the first Friday of every month. I'm like no yeah I you know <laughs> so it's maybe <laughs> it's come to the select board meeting and then they're also doing things because you don't have that Friday off, that Wednesday off, just to come to the Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. So it is tough to coordinate, but Survey Monkey could work really well. Mm -hmm. Yes, there might be somebody that upholds that idea and collects the data and does maybe have an opportunity to go around, but this building is one. You could get a leader here to get mm -hmm. that info. Mm -hmm. I think the info has been out there several times. We need IT, we need HR. Yeah, that's why I bring those specific ones up because it's been talked about over and over and I don't know for years what the, you know oh it's talked about all the time yeah. but nobody's ever you know, like yes we need one but there's always questions nobody knows any of the answers nobody's done any homework you know yeah, type yeah, of thing yeah. and so you can't go and present I want more money if you you know if you don't have a, your, your strong argument yeah some background information and a proposal together yeah mm-hmm Okay. I mean, I can bring it up with the rest of the select board at a select board meeting and see what we can get and kind of go from there. I mean, it seems like that would be the next step. I just didn't know what you guys had already. Yeah, you know, we wanted it, but yeah. um, it's it's just one of those things that we, with, with our team changing a little bit yeah. here and there mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we haven't had the opportunity to, nor or do we have, you know, we talked about one person gonna uh, be a group that wanted to research the uh, HR people. I think Terry and, and someone else, you know, we had a small little group that was gonna do that and they never met. And then we also had another group that was gonna do the IT, yes. right? right? And Gabriel's not here anymore. <laughs> he was the genius yeah. on the IT. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we kind of fell apart. <laughs> yeah. I mean, given small committees at night, right, so it's hard, right, because yeah. we all have, you know, our day jobs. Don't quit those just to do this. Yeah. Um, but I think the reality is the overall is um, that's what you need. I mean, other towns, it doesn't take a whole lot to look online and see what the departments are of each town, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they have an IT person at a, six towns that you've researched online in five minutes and three of them have HR well there's your answer I think I yeah, mean yeah. of comparable size that's what I mean yeah, yeah. I mean it's that's easy to look at the step and then say okay then how much is it gonna cost physically where's their desk I'm not sure yeah, an IT yeah. person needs a desk right because they can most likely are gonna work from contract home. remotely <laughs> yeah. you know yeah um, an HR person might be available three days a week I don't know you know what I mean so yeah. it's Again, shared space, you know, yeah. HR, are you going to visit the HR person for this? Or I don't know, maybe it is a 40 hour position. Yeah. Those things are just gravy after you decide, yes, we need it, now what are we gonna do for it? Mm -hmm. Because both of those are clearly support to the people who've worked for this, this town yeah. for a long time and or are going to. It's just clearly a support but we do, staff. We do, it's not like that though. I mean, we have people within the staff that are doing some things. Like yeah. we have these, this person shared with this person. Okay, well maybe the uh, assistant treasurer is the HR person and now the, you know, is also this person. Yeah. yeah. We, we, got, we got, we got, oh, everybody's doing over. everybody else's all kinds of different jobs. It's not really a clear cut. This, right. this is a, this is, would be your job duties and this is going to be your job duties. You know, there's a lot of, sharing right now oh, and yeah, yeah. yeah and moving forward it's what Hadley needs right you, we need we were just we just heard 2019 yeah. hello yeah and we're, yeah. we have I'm surrounded by boxes and paper like that's oh, yeah. just yeah, yeah. what yeah <laughs> talk about resources just, yeah. and waste mm -hmm. yeah. so the reality is right but that is what it is that's yeah. what we need right now we need that 
no, there's not five hats because then your employee gets overworked mm -hmm. or X is this plus this. It's a little mushy. Yeah, yeah. That gets yeah. a little wonky. But do we need, like, just let's use um, HR. Do we need a, um, when we're looking at how much money are we going to be needing? Are we going to be needing more money? Are we going to have the assistant treasurer do you know be full-time as HR and then maybe are we looking for maybe a part-time because that's what a lot of the time is being used for maybe a only a part-time um, are we gonna fund an mm. assistant treasurer I'm just saying you know no, I understand. depending on how much time yeah, it's saying. being taken down yeah 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 and, and I don't know all the times that and how yeah, much time no. it takes and and, and maybe it, it I'm guessing it is a full-time job Mm -hmm. Just the HR, I would think. I mean, do you know how many employees are in Hadley? I want to say there's, well, for just the town, not the school, is, I want to say there's like a hundred or something. That's a like lot. That. Yeah. It's a lot of people yeah. to uh, coordinate yeah. and have adapt and whatever. I mean, yeah. life happens every day. Um, so, I mean, an, an HR person would be quite expensive, right? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they not don't be cheap. work for pennies. No, right? no. So, no. and you have to have that benefit of them being here, you know. Right. Which mm -hmm. it seems like there would be, but you know, how do you sell that? Well, know? I think that there could be a a give and a take. I mean, I don't know if we're. I don't know the ins and the outs and the veins of a lot of it, but HR can be helpful for oh, some yeah. things that we may be losing. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it could be yeah. beneficial. Definitely. Definitely. And do we want to do, you know, maybe think about one, you know, instead of doing everything all at once, maybe one a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah what one's Which the one's the important. most important? You know? I mean, the school just hired a new IT person, and there's been talk of, can that person do some work for the town? Right. Oh. But we haven't worked out those details yet, you know. It's tricky, yeah. so. It's tricky. <laughs> I don't know, call me naive. How is that tricky? To work out they the work details of the IT. In the town? For the town? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I don't know that. Yeah. But it just seems like that wouldn't be that tricky. No, it doesn't seem like it would be that <laughs> tricky. Throw a stone or I, even a I, laptop. I understand your point of view. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just it curious. Is, I, maybe yeah. I said the wrong thing and yeah, I'll get yeah. a bunch of emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm just, I mean, naive. I'm just saying it. But yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that. I think we've talked about that a lot, sharing, and mm -hmm. so, and we just heard Annie say she wanted to be community and have the yeah, departments yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we start there. Maybe we we start there. Yeah. I mean, there's probably a hundred employees with the elementary and high school, right? Yeah. And there's a hundred employees in the town of Hadley or more, but yeah. Um, so that's two hundred people, but that the HR person might be involved in or is the HR not going to do the school I don't know they but have their own HR department oh there. excellent yeah excellent yeah we're paying for that that's good yeah so yeah. there you go mm -hmm. yeah, um, we should see what we can mine some value out of what's going on over at the school yeah I think they wouldn't be opposed to saying HR during I mean they're both during the same time so but yeah I brought up the HR over there, and I know there was some answer I got back, but I forget what it is right now. It could be yeah. a, a good answer. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. More than the I'm IT. Not, don't have my pulse on, or I think yeah. the pulse of all the HR. Yeah, and I don't really understand the IT either, because IT yeah. at, at all time. I mean, if you're building computers, that's one thing, but if you're just working software, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's a whole different ball game, and that's generally what the IT person does in this sort of setting. They're not building computers, no, you know, no, there's no, no. two different brains. Right. Um, and so the IT person is pro probably helping with software and helping sc figure out which is the best scanner yeah, yeah, for yeah. both That's the planning the board. The IT thing, that you know, just look around. We need an IT person that knows how to get the stuff on to digital so we right. can get rid of all this stuff, right. you know. That's a huge This part. whole, yeah, yeah, and so maybe we just... Can't. Look at that desk. Maybe we just <laughs> can't afford both. <laughs> you know what I mean? We can't afford both. I mean, in time. Yeah. For time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For right. per hour day time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but maybe it's a company. Like a, I don't know. You know, maybe. Well, we already have a company. I know we have the company, so. which is very expensive. Yeah, but yeah. maybe it's a business that has two employees that we hire. I don't know. Or maybe it's yeah. just two employees. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. Okay. Well. 
<laughs> but so I, what, what, are, what, are, what do you what's think? What's the answer to it after we've talked mm -hmm. about it? Um, I mean, sort of we can bring it up more with the select board and see if there's, you know, maybe Molly's got some ideas. I know she's looked into this in the past, I believe, as well. So I haven't talked to her specifically about this. I think we're all on the same page. It's just how are we going to do it? How are yeah. we going to continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the how, can we make, how can we make forward progress in the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Outside of just oh, putting it in the ad, an ad in the paper, <laughs> <laughs> figuring out yeah, the well, money later, because that's what you do. Right. That's yeah, what happens. Yeah, yeah. That's ultimately you know? what we do. But right, and so yeah. I think we have to figure out. But you just like mentioned, you, you just you from. just said, I don't know, you know, a ton of questions right there. Yeah. Do we need one person? Do we need two people? Do we need this? Do we need that? Yeah. I mean, there's so many questions, right? Yeah. Who's well, already doing some of these things? Or, well, do, I know who's doing, doing all, yeah. a lot of this thing, but. Right. You know, how do we balance it all? Yeah. Who is doing the IT stuff? Oh, IT? No, I mean, they have an IT person. Yeah. Well, it's the business. Yeah, yeah. I forget but there's no one in-house that no, puts the fire out while here. it's happening? No, no. Right, so yeah. that's what an IT person does at a school, right? Yeah, yeah. They go into classroom B because their computer went down. And yeah, all of a sudden, on, boom, all, it's on. You know, but it's they're not. And cast is online and all right. that now, so you know they and don't everything, make sure that works. Yeah, yeah, everything's online. The registrations yeah. for the students are online. You know everything. Yeah. So yeah, some of the times that shuts down, you have to fix it, and I'm sure yeah. it's a full time job there. So we need one here, double time. So I don't know. I mean, I'm. I guess the where do the questions mm -hmm. come from? None of us are IT people, yes. right. so that's what right. I just said, like, who's doing the IT here? Oh, no one. Oh, the business that we would eventually not have. You know, I don't think they're going to be that helpful. But I think it would be easy to just go to another town and say, hi, what does your IT person do? Right? I mean, we, we can't make up what IT people do. It's either you want one or you don't, and then there's parameters they give you. This is what I do. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And we know how much money we can pay them. I think that gives it, isn't that obvious? Like, we can't come up with it. We're not the pro. We're not pros of it. We don't know. The questions we have are because we don't have an IT yeah, person, yeah, yeah. period. So, and the questions we have about HR are exactly the same. We don't have one, so we don't know. You know, we don't even know the questions to ask. And so I think it's, the question is, are we getting it or are we not? And if we're not, let's move on. If we are, let's work toward getting it. Yeah. And, because uh, there are some questions, but... The questions are we need it to yeah. support there it's part of the support for the entire staff not just one department or the other it's everyone yeah yeah you know I mean I think that's what I've heard in the past so many different ways yeah it's yeah we're it's talking HR and um, IT IT yep. and so we don't know what we don't know so we can't ask and that's the bottom line. So I'm saying, maybe, how do you find out if we really need it? Who's the one to ask? Is it another town? Is it? Is there an all-encompassing like person who tells you what other towns do, or you just do your own investigating? All right. So not you per specifically. Yeah, wind this conversation back a little bit. Sure I was at, I was I brought up to them. Yeah. If we want to do anything with other staff, you know. IT, HR, yeah. finance, um, you know, now is a good time to kind of start planning several months before the town meeting, mm -hmm. you know, in case we want to do that, have an override, whatever, to afford it, you know, can we think about it? And the consensus here is, you know, do we have a committee? We're doing that wage study. Do we just, how do we just kind of put that, draw that line in the sand and, you know, do it, so to speak, so that we, we kind of feel we need these functional roles, but mm -hmm. how do we prove that we need them or how do we go about doing them? Mm -hmm. okay. So doing a needs analysis obviously would be something that we could do. Um, yeah, and is it a committee, do, do we bring it up to the select board, how do we, you know? Oh yeah. We've got to we got to bring it up to the select board, be, obviously. They're going to be doing yeah. the hiring and firing. Yeah. So it would be the Who select board in you. charge of them, like any other department. Of course. Or, yeah, well, we could say they're under the town 
administrator or they mm -hmm. report directly to the select board you know we mm -hmm. have to figure that out well yeah i wasn't thinking the committee would do that stuff no I, no, no, no. I, no but i mean one of the questions you yeah. know what i mean like who would they be on like yeah, you know yeah, it's just question. question one answered <laughs> well no i mean you know who would hr necessarily are they under I think like the HR should or would they go under the town administrator, right? The town administrator then, I mean, has... No, I think select board. You think all the departments go under select board? I mean, that would be a question. Because if everybody's yeah. going under the select board, it feels like you, you don't have... You, you should... Yeah. You're too busy to be doing... You're meeting once a week yeah. if there's yeah. questions. I think that they should, like, almost... That's That's why we did talk at one point about the the town government because mm. it, I see what you're saying because in most in, mo in most organizations they have a flow chart mm -hmm. and okay so I go to my supervisor goes to their supervisor no they we don't just go to the board you know we go to certain levels and they go to the board someone they should people have each yeah. de department has a head like David is the head of all it should be of, of the departments mm -hmm. he goes and to you, you are pretty much. And, and you have a very horizontal organizational chart. You've got a lot of people who are directly elected by the voters, and so we don't have we don't have the the pyramid structure mm -hmm. as a business, so like most might businesses might. would, or the mm -hmm. military, or, or right. most other organizations. You have a very horizontal one with independent actors who are in charge of critical parts of your. Right. Of your government. Um, so, you know, to the extent the select board covers a lot of territory, I work for the select board. The, the departments that are under the select board's control report back to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of boards and committees and officers that do not answer to the select board. Mm -hmm. If you want to think about this town hall, there's only like four or five people who fall under my direct supervision. Right. Everybody else is an independent actor. Right. Uh, right. Or Voted by the town. Actors. So getting the kind of coordination and cooperation is a matter of, of, of convincing rather than ordering hmm. uh, in an organization like that. And this is very typical for a small town to have that right. kind of horizontal plane of command and everybody somehow works together to a common purpose. Um, but as we get more complex, that's going to be harder to achieve and the need for more top-down mm -hmm. pyramid yeah. organization is going to be more apparently felt. Yeah, this, I think the question is so complicated because it so opens up so many other questions about what to do. So. So that's why when you say, that's you know, why, it, yeah, is, yeah. Well, it is, hey, it is a little complicated. Well, well, yeah. and, like, and do you have time to, it, would, would, the, would yeah. these two positions be under, and do you have time for that, you know? I mean, the heart to a good employee is their boss, right? So mm -hmm. like, who's overseeing these folk, and then how does that work and translate if, A, you don't have enough time for two more people who are obviously going to be very very busy well he it would make sense that you would not maybe have some more time because a lot of those jobs you get stuck doing <laughs> yeah i mean right? if you, if you talk about the kinds of work that are generated right now without those positions being in place right and uh, you know how many how much time is going to be freed up by solving that by mm -hmm. delegating that task to, to some other else. departments or other people mm-hmm yeah. And having it be clear that that's this person's role mm -hmm. to do this job. Yeah. yeah. Clear job description. Instead of being more vague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we go back to the hats and the job description and yeah. what makes a happy employee. I think knowing what their parameters are, right? Yeah. So if they're wearing too many hats, that gets really mushy. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So this will come up on tri-board discussion on the 5th. Okay. Because uh, I'll be asking for marching orders, which we don't need to generate on the 5th, but uh, we, start, we need to start talking about it. But I've got to inform the departments how they're going to be putting their uh, budgets together and when are those budgets going to be due. So 
that's information that needs to come from the select board. Uh, and we need to have that come. We need to start having that conversation. Of what are the goals for FY twenty twenty? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know how to, What's the budget approach? What do you want to achieve? How are you going to measure your success? How are you going to achieve that strategic vision? Okay. So, with your kind permission, I'll post for you. For yes, yes, please. Okay. Um, so what is The fifth is Wednesday. The fifth. Oh, it's you're next Wednesday. Wednesday, the fifth. Of the it's a tri board meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I'll be out of town. Okay. Will you be there, Val? Val, will you? I'll be, be here. I'll, I'll be, be there. Here. And so we'll I have think I can be there. Yeah. Yes, please. What so fun? You would post for us. Um, what time? It, well, all tri boards usually at six o'clock. Okay. Yep. Um, at that, the other thing is, um, j just so I don't miss it, um, I think Linda might have mentioned, and I, I don't always check because I don't have access to my town email all the time. Does she need us to do transfer before she, I leave? No, she doesn't need you to do a transfer right now, but she is alerting you that uh, this is for the unemployment budget. Right. All right. So we largely expended that. We expect to, to be spending that into a deficit um, sometime at the back end of the fiscal year 2019. So she's putting you on notice that she will be coming to you for a uh, transfer. Okay. But she's not asking for it right now. It's nothing we have to do by, by the end of the year. Okay. Well, because it's fiscal year. Anyways. As All long right. as we get it done by July 15th. Okay. Right. So um, I guess we'll see everyone on, on the fifth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe before we leave, can we just s grab another meeting too? Because uh, when we're at a tri board, it, um, just so we can have an idea when the next meeting would be, it would be good. Because um, that way we don't have no, to talk in the meeting. Then, yeah. we just leave. Okay. So, so after um, December five is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, just something. So I have, we have something to in mind. Mm -hmm. David, you want to look at your can your schedule too? No. I have to do it in my, oh wait, I've got it online. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, thank All you right, guys. Well, I'm going to run up to the municipal building committee. Oh, okay. I'm double P hitting a bolt here today. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, have a great Thanks. Day. We'll see you next. Oh Wednesday. yeah, we'll see you next week. <laughs>
detention as well as getting a better sense of, okay, so what are the legal parameters set by the Commonwealth that we have to pay attention to? Okay. So sometimes, um, sometimes you've all asked for a budget in mid-January. So I can do it. Uh, the numbers become a little bit more squishy. I'd rather have this more solid numbers, I would yeah. think. Uh, I'm yeah. not in... I'd rather, you know, not... If, if you think that the... Squishy is never good. No. I, 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 unless anybody disagrees, I would say no, I February. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that we did differently in FY19, the current fiscal year, is we had the departments meet as divisions. Yes, I, know I thought that went well. Did you? That went very well. Yes, that's terrible. Like working finance committee, like that approach. So, if we're going to do that, it's going to take a little bit more time on my side to make sure that everybody's working in coordination. Uh, but I think it yielded a pretty good result. So, I'm willing to support that process. Okay. All right. So, on the fifth. What are your priorities? We want to work together as departments or as divisions. And when do we want to see numbers? Why? Okay. So we can probably give you that. We could do that on the fifth. I'm, I'm thinking we would want to, unless anybody. Yeah, but as as of right now, I I would be leaning in favor of doing it in February and doing as divisions. Um, if I'm, if we end up talking it on the fifth. It's, Unless anybody disagrees. Okay, so the um, then we would would need to probably set up a, uh, um, another meeting at some point to discuss how are we going to meet with the departments again? Are we going to meet with the departments? That was always right. a question. That's something that you should bring up on the fifth and establish clear meeting schedules expectations with the select board mm -hmm. and I think the range has been the select board last year gave the budget pretty much to you and said come to us with any disputes issues. Yeah. or issues uh, in other years the select board said it's our budget the finance committee can sit while we talk to the departments mm -hmm. but we're not going to have the departments go meet with the finance committee I don't think we have that kind of select board right mm -hmm. now but that's the range from total hands off to total hands on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we so will we'll discuss that on December five. We will discuss that on the on the fifth is the plan, right? Yep, that's the plan. Okay. So I'm thinking at this point we don't need to meet again. So on the fifth we'll meet and we'll have this discussion, and then after that we really could probably put it off until January. Mm -hmm. Our next meeting. And just to you know, just to touch base one more time, and it could probably even be even brief, just in case someone needs something, transfers or whatever, mm -hmm. have a nice quick short meeting on January, um, and then really we won't be getting into anything until after that February. All right. You know when you bring us the budget after that. Very good. Okay. So in January, what t what what would be good for uh, Tuesday? Uh, uh, doesn't matter. Pretty much open. Do we know? I don't really know. It's I don't think. This, so. Yeah, I think for us in our particular business cycle, there's not a day that's better than the other. So yeah. um, it just you know, but we're, we're pretty wide open right now. Okay. Yeah, so I just can't do the seventh or. Okay, so the my second. suggestion would be either a um, Tuesday or Thursday, just because I know that we I have some there's some meetings on Mondays and then there's others. Mm -hmm. for Wednesdays or select board meetings and yeah yeah Tuesdays and Thursdays are good yeah I have no idea does <laughs> so Thursday work because it's that's you seem used to be finance committee it worked used to do well I mean if, if we could do a Thursday okay a Thursday okay. And, 10. and so January would be third 10 uh, 17 10, 10. yeah I have a meeting in Boston that goes okay. until, you know, I'm usually done by three. I can, I can be here for, for ah, an evening. You should, that's yeah. a long oh. day, though. Yeah, it's no. a long day, but that's Why okay. don't we, I mean, it's open, so why don't we say the third? Would the third be better? Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, Definitely no, no, no. Then, not. Matt, 
Okay, <laughs> the 17th. Yeah. Um, that would, I think for us that might be best. 17th. Let's do it. That's David, 16th. does that work for you? No, it does not. No. no. Okay. But go ahead. No, we don't want to go without you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try something else. How about the Tuesdays? Tuesday the 15th, that works. Tuesday the 15th. Works. Yes. Me too. And how about the, is it, would we be messing up with the planning board on that day, the 15th? Um, I know with the cameras and all, I'm just saying. No, no, they can, they can work around that. Okay. So, so we're going to plan for our, I mean, besides for the 5th, our next meeting will be scheduled on the 15th of January. Tuesday, Jan 5 to 15. Yep. Okay. I'm going to write it down. Okay. It's 6 o'clock always, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Next meeting. Okay, great. So, um, did anybody have anything else or no? We have a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks.